This week is clearly about Jackson Hole and the Fed's retreat to Wyoming to discuss monetary policy. I'm not sure why you need to go to the Rockies to discuss money. We do it every day from the confines of this small studio. Monday's session closed at the lows, aiding to Friday's losses with fears coming on two fronts, Fed policy and how restrictive they're gonna to have to be, but also Europe and soaring net gas prices. Gazprom is a Russian utility and they're shutting down that gas supply saying they need to repair pipelines. But the real reason is pretty obvious. With a war raging in Ukraine and sanctions still in place, Putin wants to make it very clear he can and will use energy as a weapon. All in, we've got a lot on our plate. We have a lot to talk about tonight. Welcome to The Money Runner. I'm David Nelson. Wall Street has always had a passion for animals. Throughout history, market and monetary sentiment has been represented by all sorts of creatures, including bulls, bears, doves, and hawks, and of course, the dreaded black swan. I bring it up because this year, the entire zoo has turned to Jackson Hole for insight on just how Jay Powell is gonna spin the current economic backdrop. At the start of the year, rising inflation was the trigger for a born again Federal Reserve to abandon their game plan shifting to an aggressive string of rate hikes, hoping to tame the inflation beast. To date, the only evidence we have that this is working is a single set of inflation numbers showing a slight downtick in the headline numbers. So where are we now? I think this chart is ground zero for the current bull bear debate. Markets have priced in not just a peak in Fed funds by this time next year, but monetary policy that will reverse course expecting several rate cuts in the back half of 2023. Most valuation models start with the risk-free rate and any movement or even the perception of a change in future policy has an enormous impact on multiples and with it equity prices. Outside of quantitative easing, the Fed has two principal tools to control rates and future expectations. The rate part, that's easy. And we look to each FOMC decision day for Fed funds to be up, down, or to remain the same. Perception of future policy, that comes from the press release and the conference that follows. Whether by design or just a lack of discipline, the Fed's more often used tool is an endless stream of talking Fed heads, making casual comments to reporters and or an appearance on your favorite financial news channel. The confusion that followed, that's often self-defeating. Here we are, we're just in front of the Jackson Hole retreat with intense speculation regarding Jay's opening remarks. He addresses his colleagues on Fridays and you can bet every word will be parsed looking for clues or a hidden agenda. All right, I wanna pivot back to the markets and take a look at the charts. Let's put up chart one. From a technical perspective, the market has seen significant repair and at the lows of June, the percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average was just 18.9%. Today, it's over 41. The low reading in June matches the levels we saw in bear, other bear markets, but not maybe what we saw during the financial crisis or in 2008 or the COVID lows of 2020. Let's go to chart two. It was hard not to notice the trend line break to the upside on July 19th. It set the stage for a significant rally that put the NASDAQ into bull market territory. Just from that close, that day, the S&P 500 added another 9% before failing at the all-important 200-day moving average. Let's go to chart, the final chart, chart three. Now the lines move, only this time we're looking at a downtrend line drawn from the all-time highs. A breakout here, that would be significant. It would fuel a lot more price momentum to the upside, especially if it happened on volume. Earlier, I talked about the Wall Street Zoo, including bulls, bears, hawks, and doves, but I saved my favorite for last. The black swan emits more fear than the ferocious bull or bear and can cause more damage than a hawk or dove. By definition, a black swan event can't be predicted, but it doesn't keep us from trying. The two most obvious scenarios will be triggered by one or both of our, our major adversaries. We've been butting heads with Russia since the end of World War II. Maybe General Patton got it right. 
After taking Berlin, commanding the Third Ar Army, he was reported to have said we should continue all the way to Moscow. Shortly thereafter, General Eisenhower relieved him of his command. Here we are more than three quarters of a century later, and we're head to head with a sociopath capable of triggering a nuclear event, threatening not just Ukraine's sovereignty, but all of Europe. Putin's ability to cripple the continent economically by cutting off energy supplies or a potential nuclear disaster at a nuclear power plant speaks to the gravity of the situation. Half a world away, another black swan is threatening Taiwan with a recent set of live fire drills by China's President Xi. This is how mistakes happen. All it would take is a young pilot or ship commander from either side to get their orders wrong and trigger an all out war forcing the United States to jump in. Today, investors are caught in the middle with a Fed looking to regain their credibility on one side and on the other, a geopolitical backdrop just this side of DEF CON 1. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot, Captain Nelson, speaking from the flight deck. Please fasten your seat belts and follow the instructions of the crew members respecting a little rough weather ahead. All right, that's it for tonight. Uh, I'll see you again next week. And of course, every morning with the Market Minute. Thanks for joining. I'm David Nelson.